Okay, there was a question about the mechanism for using oxalochloride with catalytic DMF to convert a carboxylic acid to an acid chloride. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at the structure of oxalochloride. And so uh, that is going to react with DMF first. And the DMF is catalytic. That's what the square brackets under the arrow mean. So the structure of DMF is a tertiary amide. And again, it's used in catalytic amount, which means that um, it's going to react um, through the, the reaction mechanism and then be reproduced uh, so that you only need uh, a substoichiometric amount of it. So the mechanism of oxalochloride plus DMF overall loses CO2 and carbon monoxide uh, as they react together. And then it forms a, a, an intermediate, which I'll call uh, X, that reacts with the acid uh, to form the acid chloride. So let's go ahead and, and look at um, DMF to start with, because there's a, something important about it that uh, we need to know in terms of how to start this mechanism. And that is basically the resonance form will help guide us in how the mechanism starts. And that resonance form is shown here, where we're actually putting the lone pair of electrons from nitrogen onto oxygen, creating that charge-separated uh, species. And that's going to help dictate you know, how the next arrow is drawn, where basically we're reacting it with the oxalochloride. There's delta minus, there's delta plus. So that's telling us that the negative is attracted to the positive. And we can go ahead and draw that arrow. We're going to break the pi bond. So it's a good idea when you're drawing these mechanisms not to move things around too much or rotate or flip things. So we're drawing a new bond to that carbon. We said we broke that pi bond. The chlorine's still attached, and then everything else is still attached uh, to that carbon. Notice the migration of the negative charge now onto that oxygen. So um, this species will basically then collapse to eliminate off the chlorine as chloride. Now again, we don't really want to change how we're drawing things too much. So we're, we're conserving that negative charge. Now it's on the chloride anion. So at this step, the chlorine will attack that carbon. So now this is a neutral intermediate. That's going to do an elimination starting from the nitrogen. We're going to break this carbon-oxygen sigma bond. That's going to form CO2. This bond here will break and do what's called an alpha elimination. So normally you're used to seeing beta elimination. When that happens, you lose CO2 gas, you lose carbon monoxide gas, and now you're generating that intermediate X which is that chloride salt. So this is the intermediate X. And so we still haven't reacted that with the acid yet, and we still have not produced uh, the catalytic DMF. So we'll go ahead and add another. So at this point, we will take the carboxylic acid, react it with that intermediate we're calling X. 
Again, that's going to form the acid chloride, regenerate the DMF, and also form HCl. So those are the things we have to form. Now we want to show the mechanism of how that happens. We can have the lone pair attack that carbon. We then put the pi bond electrons onto the nitrogen. We can then have uh, that chloride ion attack the carbonyl carbon. At this point, uh, what we're going to do now is an elimination. So again, this is your standard beta elimination that we're used to. This will collapse. We'll then break that bond, so that's going to form the acid chloride. And we get this species, which will then decompose to eliminate chloride minus. And then at this point, we do an acid-base reaction. Restore the uh, lone pair onto the nitrogen, and you'll see that that will regenerate the DMF and also produce HCl. So this shows you how that this intermediate we're calling X is then used to transform the acid into the acid chloride to regenerate DMF, again, that's catalytic. So we have to show it not being incorporated into the product, but being regenerated. And then HCl is the byproduct. So remember um, that the H is coming from this H here. The Cl is coming from the oxalochloride, which again decomposes with DMF to lose CO2 and CO. So you'll actually see those evolved if you have a deflated balloon on the reaction mixture, it will actually um, blow up with those gases. And so that's how you can sort of determine uh, the rate at which that happens.